Good afternoon. I'll be discussing today with you a very important subject, namely fractures of the femur in adults, which is unfortunately becoming a common problem, probably due to the increasing lifespan. Actually, the World Health Organization is estimating by 2050 around 6.3 million new, year, new cases per year worldwide are going to happen. To classify these fractures, there have been several classifications that have been designed to help with better understanding of the diagnosis and management. We start with the Gardens classification, which is probably the most popular and useful classification for the neck of femur. It ranges from type 1, which is an undisplaced, usually vulgus impacted incomplete fracture, where the lateral cortex is disrupted the medial cortex is preserved. The type 2 is a complete fracture yet non-displaced. The garden type 3, a complete fracture with a partial displacement indicated by change in the angle of the trabeculae. And the last type, type 4, is a complete fracture with complete displacement leading to parallel orientation of the trabeculae. Another very useful classification is the Powell's classification, where it depends on the inclination or the angle of the fracture. The type 1 being the most horizontal type and the type 3 being the most vertical type. In type 1, the angulation is up to 30 degrees and the compressive forces are dominant. In type 2, the, ty the uh, inclination is around 30 to 50 degrees with shearing force occurring and may have a negative effect on bone healing while type 3 is 50 degrees or more the shearing force is quite predominant and is associated with a significant amount of varus force which might likely result in fracture displacement and vertical or varus collapse the AO classification although being quite elaborate and detailed uh, unfortunately it hasn't found to be of a good inter or intra observer reliability so we don't use it that often the previous were the traumatic classifications according to the displacement angulation and configuration of the fracture and helps a lot with the management but unfortunately it misses important types of neck femur fractures such as stress fractures here shown an example of it you, you see it more in repetitive athleticists like distance runners you can see that here where the arrow is showing you have the compression type mainly at the inferior aspect of the neck and the tension type where the fracture is at the superior aspect of the neck and the third type is the completely displaced fracture uh, caused by stress the importance of these fractures the, the uh, stress fractures is that they are easily missed probably due to the absence of a definite history of trauma. When you have an x-ray, it could be deceiving. You might miss it easily. So you have to have it in mind so that you might need to ask or resort to an MRI or a CT. As you can see here, that was a missed fracture on the plain x-ray. Here you can see it in complete stress fracture at the compression site. Another very important type of fractures of the neck of the femur are pathological fractures caused by pathological entity of bone such as secondaries or uh, metabolic disorders you have to diagnose them because you have to have during your management the workup generally and locally but unfortunately it's out of our domain here to discuss it in details now to diagnose such important fractures you have to go systemically starting by a proper history the majority of these cases are uh, 
fractures of the elderly. So you have uh, usually a minor fall history, like uh, just a slip or uh, catching the edge of the carpet. Or, on the contrary, if it's in a young age, it's quite a severe trauma, probably uh, road traffic accidents or severe polytrauma. Or you might not have a history of trauma at all, so you have to ask about repetitive strenuous strain and stress fractures. Clinically, you have the typical deformity, which is shortening of the limb uh, with external rotation. But you have to be aware that it's not always apparent, for example, in stress fractures or undisplaced fractures of the neck of the femur. Actually, sometimes the only apparent clinical finding or sign is the hip tenderness on palpation or movement. It's unusual to find associated general or local complications such as shock, hemorrhage, wound or nerve injuries in such patients because they have usually of the low velocity trauma in elderly. But in younger age groups, it is caused by high velocity injuries, so you must exclude general and local complications as they are quite high in occurrence. Also, you can get associated fractures with the neck, such as the shaft, which confronts the surgeon with quite a challenging management problem. Radiologically, to diagnose this patient, the golden standard up till now is still the plain x-ray. Usually, you can diagnose uh, with a plain x-ray alone and this can be your key to management. However, in some cases, like for example here, you, we use the CT to diagnose a, a mildly impacted type 1 garden fracture. And in this here on the right side, you could see that it, the, the fracture could have been missed easily on the plain x-ray, but showed on the CT. MRI is also very useful, especially when you're doubting occult fracture, fractures, such as the one on the right side here, or stress fractures like the, the compression fracture here on the left side. Now, to manage these fractures, you have a real challenge lying in these fractures have so many factors determining the ideal way of treating them. And there are so many ways to treat them according to factors that we're mentioning now. But before anything, you have to manage these as any fractures. You have to be aware, especially in younger patients where there are high velocity injuries, the ATLS score, the Advanced Trauma Life Support Scoring, and to check for any associated injuries because these could be life-threatening. Probably the most important factor to look for is the age. The age dramatically changes the way you, you manage these patients. Most studies classify young age as that below 60 years. And the younger the age, the more inclined you are towards internal fixation. You must aim at complete anatomic reduction. You could accept up to 15 degrees valgus or up to 10 degrees angulation on an AP view. You have to have a well compressed fixation using three pallet and screws, uh, which proved to be a very good method of treatment. Some use compression hip screws, as it might be biomechanically more superior in cadavers. However, it sacrifices a large amount of bone may injure the blood supply, an anti-rotation screw is often needed and entails increased cost and operative time. So we might reserve it for high energy or vertical shear fractures. This here shows the typical uh, orientation of a properly placed three screw parallel fracture fixation. And you can see it here on the left and the right side. And that's a picture of the compression device with an anti-rotation screw. Or you can use the recently added plate screw fixation device. 
However, you have to know that internal fixation entails a lot of complications, mainly a vascular necrosis, which is up to 33% in some studies, very dependent on the type of fracture, the grade, and the duration from the actual time of injury to your fixation. Failure of fixation averaged around 16% with different researchers. And non-union in up to 33% of studies. Of course, you have to, to understand that these are quite dependent on the perfection of your technique, how much displacement was originally encountered, and the duration between the fixation and your uh, and the actual injury. Elderly age above 60 could actually be further subclassified as above 80 years and probably you'd be happy to have a bipolar fixation in such a case. But as you can see, after some time, you could get wearing of the acetabulum. So people are more inclined now, especially in age between 60 and 80, to resort to a total hip replacement as shown. Bone quality is also a very important factor in determining your way of management. The more osteoporotic your patient is, the more inclined you'll be to replace rather than fix. The advantages of replacement are a lower reoperation re rate, better patient satisfaction, and more cost effectively. But it has a slightly increased mortality. And you have to always remember that a united fracture neck of femur is a lifelong solution, so never rule it out. The bone quality also affects the, probably your type of your prosthesis. In severely osteoporotic patients, a cemented type of prosthesis could be preferred. Now, the type of fracture is also quite important. For example, here you have a bilateral stress fracture, which was fixed, and this is the ideal gold standard for managing these fractures by fixation. And in pathological fractures, it depends, of course, on the type of pathology and the extent of the disease. But you either replace the whole upper femur, like this case, or if you can, you can just replace with a cemented uh, prosthesis if it, the condition allows. Now, the duration is very important between the onset of the fracture and your actual intervention. The head of the femur has a very peculiar blood supply coming partly from the obturator artery through the ligament anterior, but the main supply is coming through the lateral and medial circumflex femoral branches of the epiphyseal artery, the uh, main being the medial femoral circumflex. So if you have a fracture here through the neck, and the duration is more than 12 hours, then you could easily expect that this head would be quite ischemic and could fall into vascular necrosis quite quickly. The classification also helps you a lot with determining what to do. For example, in the uh, garden classification, type 1, you could imagine that you, you'd be better off with a fixation technique. But the more you go towards the garden type 4, you'd be more inclined for a replacement as the failure of fixation is quite higher. Also, the type of Powell angle factor would help you to determine. The more horizontal you have the fracture, you'd expect to have a better result with internal fixation than the vertically oriented Powell type 3. If you have associated fractures, especially if you have an associated femoral fracture, then you'll be facing quite a challenging situation. You have two options basically. You can fix both via a single fixation, for example, a gamma name or a PFN or a recon name. But of course, the disadvantage would be if one of the fractures goes well and the other 
either fa uh, fixation fails or a non-union ensues, then you have a problem that you might need to dismantle the whole construct, which might cause a problem with the uh, actual healing part of fracture. Therefore, some people now resort more to fixation separately, double fixation, for example, cancellous fissures for the neck of the femur with a supracondylar nail for the shaft or a DHS for the uh, neck of the femur and a plate for the shaft so that you could tackle uh, each one of these fractures if you have a problem. So basically the take-home message is these are common fractures that could be easily missed many factors interplay in determining the ideal way of treatment and be careful not to miss associated injuries or fractures thank you very much for your care